Jesus prayer. It's a short sentence prayer that goes like this. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. It's meant to be said in repetition as a meditative or contemplative tool to center us. It's an ancient prayer that dates at least to the sixth century, but the content of the prayer is much older. As it puts together St. Peter's confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, with the prayer of the publican or tax collector in Luke 18, have mercy on me, a sinner. And brief prayers like this act as a sort of tether that connects our everyday life to God. They're called arrow prayers sometimes, because they are prayers that can be prayed at any point without hesitation or thinking. We just simply release them, like an arrow released from a bow. It's sometimes easy to think of prayer as something very programmatic and requiring serious thought and an effort. But these arrow prayers remind us that we can offer our whole lives to God in prayer, no matter our circumstances and no matter what we happen to be doing at that moment. Prayer can be as simple and natural as breathing. The Jesus Prayer is a particularly important prayer because it's both a summary statement of our faith and a prayer that moves beyond that statement to a place of surrender. Each word of the first half of the prayer is a proclamation of Jesus' identity. Lord, an acknowledgement that Christ is creator and sustainer of everything. Jesus, here we make the astonishing claim that this Lord of everything comes to us in the human person of Jesus, that the God of the universe has made a home among us, that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Christ. This word claims that this person who is both God above and a human being with us is the long-expected Savior we read about in the scriptures. Son of God. This Jesus is the Lord of all, the Savior of the world, and the Son who becomes our sibling and brings us into a loving relationship with God. And it's important that we're honest with this confession of faith. Maybe some days you can't honestly say, Lord, or Son of God. Maybe just the name of Jesus is all you can muster. And that's okay. Pray that. Jesus, have mercy. And just keep going. Because the second half of the prayer moves us into that loving relationship with God that Christ gives us. Have mercy on me, a sinner. This is, first of all, an acknowledgement of God's undying love for us, of the mercy that is gifted to us. And it also involves an acknowledgement of who we are. It's a prayer of humility. Have mercy on me, sinner, which is really just a way of saying that we are people who fall short of God's perfect love. We recognize that we're in need of mercy, that we can't be whole on our own. And this isn't about confessing some horrible or specific sin we've committed. It's about a way of life, a posture before God, a recognition of who we are, our need of love, forgiveness, and wholeness, and that this need is not met in ourselves alone, but by the touch of God's mercy. Asking for that mercy and admitting who we are is a way of opening up to Christ's healing, we're admitting that we are wounded, making ourselves vulnerable. And only by doing so can we let the light of Christ's forgiveness and healing in. So the first part of the prayer, a recognition of who Jesus is, and the second, a surrender to the rich and beautiful relationship we have with God in and through Jesus. And the whole of the prayer is designed to move us towards that loving God of mercy, to move us beyond the hustle and bustle of our lives, 
beyond the distractions and into the loving embrace of God's mercy. The Jesus prayer can be prayed in various ways. One is just in stillness before God in a period of silence. We can center ourselves on Christ through a short period, maybe just 10 minutes or so, of sitting in silence and saying the prayer repetitively in consonance with our breathing. As we breathe in, we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. As we breathe out, have mercy on me, a sinner. And prayer becomes as natural as breathing, as effortless as inhaling and exhaling, as much a part of us as oxygen. The prayer can also be said as one of these arrow prayers throughout the day, as we walk along the street or go about our work. We can acknowledge God's presence with us and move our attention beyond ourselves to God by praying the Jesus prayer. And whenever we're praying the prayer, and however we're doing it, a prayer rope like this one, or prayer beads of any kind, can be used as a way of focusing our entire selves, mind and body, on Christ. The prayer rope is an extremely important part of prayer in Eastern Christianity that's become more prominent in other traditions of Christianity as well, and is specifically made for praying the Jesus prayer. Each time we recite the prayer, we move on to the next knot in the rope. And passing knots or beads through our fingers as we pray the Jesus prayer can help us engage our whole selves with God. It's a way of embodying our prayer and grounding it in our material world. But the prayer can be said with or without it. So take some time of silence. Sit comfortably, breathe slowly, and let the prayer flow through you like the air you breathe. Pray the prayer as you drive or walk or go about your daily tasks. There's no point to it. You're not asking for something specific or looking for answers or anything else, but simply placing yourself before God and recognizing that God is with you and that God's presence with us all alone is the mercy we need.